Hey, good morning, Squido. It is Sunday. They just keep coming. It's one Sunday after another. Do you know we're almost at 100 episodes of Coffee Talk? That's incredible, actually. I'll have to do something. This is 96 or 7 or something like that. But it is Sunday, and football has started. Not footy, not soccer, actual American, the good kind, with the big pads and everything. <laughs> that is going to throw some of you into a tailspin, I know. So let, go ahead and make your comments about it. Fire away. I've got my coffee. got my friends of the Tank Museum. I'm actually wearing my, uh, my British Death or Glory. Uh, I can't remember which unit it is. Actually, he told me. Maybe Pilgrim will let you know down there, but we were all kitted out today. We're kitted. You know what? And I forgot to show this. Have I showed this yet? I got a duck from Michael Lovin. So I've got the. He's kind of a Marine. He's, he's kitted out in some Marine stuff right there. So there you go. Thanks, Michael. I appreciate that. I was duck worthy. Hard to imagine, but there you go. I've got my coffee. It's a nice French roast. I'm stuck on the French roast from Sam's Club because I bought the big 100 box for, you know, $7.50 or whatever they sell it for. God knows what's in it, but it tastes all right. You know what I mean? So Sunday we got football. We had football yesterday. Yay, college football, pro football. Football is everywhere. Not footy. No, it's not. That's It's better. It's <laughs> I'm going to keep poking that bear and see what happens right there. Hey, look, I got, I'm, I'm representing with my Brit stuff today. You know, I can cheer about American football. What's going on world of tanks wise? I sat down and I was researching for today. And it's, it's kind of a weird thing because there's a bunch and nothing. <laughs> I mean, how does that happen? How is there all kinds of stuff going on? But yet it feels like not much. I don't, I don't know. Uh, you'll see the tank floating around behind you there. That's the object 244 which is the one of the prototypes for the IS series, or the IS-3 series, apparently. It's an upgraded, I believe, IS moving on to the IS-3. At least that's what I got from one of the websites. It doesn't really explain that when you look at the tank details. How we get this, oh, by the way, it's a Tier Six Russian premium heavy tank. How we get it, I don't know. I already asked the question. I ha they haven't answered the question. I do not understand right now how we get it. It sounded like it was a big problem. I do not understand how we... <laughs> right now, I don't know how it will be available. <laughs> I sort of, I'm sort of thinking maybe a tank fest thing, uh, maybe a marathon at the end, or a sale, or something like that. Very strange. Usually, we get a little bit of detail about that. That one was put in our accounts as CC. Said here it is. Show it off no embargo date which means it's we can make reviews and do it now but then again there's no there's no embargo date but there's no information on how you guys are going to get a hold of this thing so sorry <laughs> i don't know true uh true voodoo streamed this yesterday and liked it i actually kind of liked it as well the first couple games i didn't it was funny that he said they almost the same thing i thought when i was doing it first couple times I went, eh, it's kind of anemic the gun doesn't really hit very hard but then as I kept playing it, it's basically IS armor down at tier six with a stock gun. So you can imagine that's actually pretty darn good. Now it's not hitting like the T-150, like a ton of bricks with 250 or 300 or whatever the crazy alpha is on most of the Russian heavy tanks. It's got like a 180 alpha or so and a relatively low pen. So you will be shooting a little bit of gold, but the armor's amazing at tier for sure. Okay, cool. I got off on a tangent right there. Standard stuff, we'll talk about some channel news, we'll do some missions and specials. I've got some subjects du jour today, really interesting. Uh, you know, when I said there's a lot of stuff and nothing going on, the, the one thing that's sort of bubbling undercurrent right now is bots and this clan that's running around trolling everybody. We'll, we'll get into that just a little bit, some interesting stuff on the forums. But we'll start with channel news, and I'm actually out of coffee, so I planned this poorly. I'll be right back, I'm gonna go reload my coffee cup. You guys do the same and we'll get started. All right, we are back. Man, I just uh, went and made my coffee, and the, the dog is standing there by the door. She'd just been out. She's looking at me, looking at the door. Open the door, and she just looks outside, looks around for a minute, then steps back, <laughs> closes the door, and she, she goes on her way. She's really learning, man. It's a rescue dog, and she has been pretty skittish around men. So if I come into a room with a purpose, like I'm moving in a, in a direction, Man, she'll hunker down thinking someone's coming after her, poor thing. 
getting a lot better breaking out of her shell now. And she's learning that kind of stuff at the door now where, hey, I can get I can get him to open the door if I just look at it like I need to go out. And she keeps trolling me because she just wants to look outside and see if that cat's out there. <laughs> Great dog, man. But definitely my wife's dog. I've had three dogs since I've been married over the years. First one was definitely my dog, a Samyud. And then turned into her dog when we got together and got married. The second dog, Dizzy, was a mutt. Great frisbee dog. That was 100% my dog. No problem. That dog absolutely loved me. This one is definitely the wife's dog. When I say that, you know how they just, for whatever reason, take on a, a, a uh, affinity for one person or the other in the family. So Mocha is definitely the wife's dog, man. She'll wherever Wherever she is, that's where Mocha is. Great dog, though. All right, where were we? Good tangent. Good tangent, Rusty. Nice talk. Good talk. All right. <laughs> Channel news. GFLC, Guido's Flying Circus. We have a Discord. So if you're in the clan, you should have the Discord. Uh, I'm thinking about whether we just open it up to all you guys and anybody who wants to come by and play games. This is a work in progress, so let me, let me take it, not slowly, but in a measured pace, shall we say, so it doesn't get too out of hand. But we do have a Discord going on, so if you're in the clan, we got that going on. And pretty soon I'll probably just open it up if you guys want to come in and platoon. I plan on having streams where I platoon with whoever wants to. We'll get to that. Speaking of that, the next stream will be tomorrow, Monday. We'll talk about it later, but Frontline is coming up tomorrow, Monday. And I'm going to do Frontline all week. I think I'm going to see how fast I can grind through with those extra Frontline grind things. I've got some good credit boosters. So I'm going to use those, and I'm going to see how much credits I can crank out in one week. So next week, when I play, it should be playing front lines because I don't have anything else to grind or whatever to pull me into to pull me into the public matches. And that's a good thing because usually there's these competed competing priorities going on. The only thing I might have is I do need to make a review on a tank that I have that will remain unmentioned, not the 244. I'll try to knock out a quick review on that thing. Direction of Guido's Flying Circus, again, that's a work in progress. It, it's going to be casual. I talked about this last week. If guys want to do some competitive stuff, that's fine. They can do that. As far as coming and going, everyone, don't worry about it. Yeah, I've had a couple people come in and then leave and send me notes. Hey, sorry, I had to leave. Don't do whatever. <laughs> I don't care. <laughs> it's not that I don't care about the clan or care about you. It's that if you have a reason, you don't have to explain that to me. We're all big boys here, so if you got something to do or somewhere to go, by all means, go do it. I appreciate the courtesy of it, but it is not required. Let me put it this way. Okay, cool. So yeah, so direction is a work in progress. For me, the idea was just some branding stuff, to be quite honest, for the channel and to help new players. So if I can get some platoons going on, if we can get guys helping each other, one of the rooms I made was gameplay help. So if you have a question and anyone in there who has an answer, go ahead and do so. There's lots of little nuances to this game that we can all help each other with. In fact, I found one yesterday on the in-game UI that I didn't know about where you could actually move from tank to tank. I think it's control and then you click on their name. I didn't try it. I meant to try it. Somebody talked about it on stream. I hope that's a true thing because I didn't know that existed. When you're dead to move around to different tanks, that's actually pretty cool. Now, if he's just talking about going to your own team, like when you left click or right right click, so I'm not sure. Maybe that's all they were talking about. I don't know. I got the impression that you could go to any tank on your team that way, but whatever. We'll see. Dead or not. Let me know down, down below if you know that. I'd, I'll test it later if I can think of it. But uh, that would be cool, though, right? Because if you could go to any dead tank on your team to look around, I, I don't know if that's possible. Guido Grind is my invite code. With a slight hesitation, I put that out. Why? Because it is apropos to what we're going to talk about later on about bots and these. I called it Pushers, Bots, White Knights, and Rebels. <laughs> we'll get to that a little while later. But Guido Grind, if you're going to start a new account or you've got somebody you would like to bring into the game. Guys, if you bring somebody into the game, give them some mentoring give them a warning about how difficult it can be at to the early to mid phases, but that it's a fun game. And once they get some stuff built up, uh, it'll be a lot more fun. But if they do missions, if they pay attention to codes and other things, they can build up a pretty decent 
starting position in the game pretty quickly if they pay attention. That is not the best way to onboard, but that's what we got. You know what I'm saying? Uh, it's kind of like, hey, come play my game and then pay close attention or you're going to hate it. <laughs> I'm not sure what the fix is there, guys. It, the, again, apropos to what we're going to talk about in a little while. I'm probably using apropos incorrectly, right? Man, you guys are kicking my butt with words you don't like lately. <laughs> flex. People don't like flex. Somebody told me they don't like um, overmatch. And there was another one in there I can't remember. A couple I was using incorrectly, or pronunciating, <laughs> pronunciating incorrectly. Oh man, thick skin, fellas, thick skin. If you got a comment, fire away, man. You know, I will, uh, I will internalize the ones that uh, I can. I will ignore the stuff that I can. <laughs> Oh man, all right. That was we're on a tangent day today. I mean, this is pure tangent day today. I talked about the stream, frontline week. Alright, that's pretty much channel news. Let's go on to the missions and specials. It's time to shill. Let's make our money. Alright, it's the all shilling all the time channel. Guido's shill arama. Here we go. <laughs> ELC Eva 90 is the festival fair tank. Does does Festival Fair feel like a really big event that is that you're not involved in I I don't know why I have that feeling to be honest I feel like it's an EU event and we're all just sort of over here getting a couple sales and some things and I know there's been a lot of stuff going on this week but actually for this month I, I don't know why I have that feeling right I'm not sure I, I don't think it's a case of hey give me more stuff it's just I, I don't know I, I'm sort of blase am I using that word right I don't <laughs> I'm sort of blase about this whole thing but anyway You'll see, this is a decent deal, it really is. 51, put your coupon on it. I actually had two coupons expire without using them. But this one can be used. It goes down to about, I think, $41 <clears throat> with a 20% coupon. Somewhere around there. So that's actually not bad. Anybody have this? I do not have this. this. I have the Firefly. How different? Why is this one different than the regular Tech Tree Firefly? I'd have to look up the stats. I don't know. It actually, this is probably the one that tempted me right here. To grab because this $25 version, I can grab this thing. I should have hit purchase first, makes it easier. Oh, is it already there? Hold on. Oh, it shows you. I didn't know that. Oh, no, 28 down to 25. Okay. <laughs> this 28 down to 25 is the, the standard 7%. If you want to know what your coupon can do, you actually have to go here, click coupon. Okay, cool. Down to 20 bucks. So 20 bucks for a tier six medium and some other goodies. It's not a fantastic deal, but it's an okay, it's an okay deal. But it's one tank I don't have. It's one premium I don't have, so I thought about trying it out. I don't know. Anybody have it? Let me know because it's on sale for today. And uh, if I read in the comments that it's cool, I might actually grab it. I wanted to give that to you for homework. <laughs> okay. Here's the. This is kind of one of the things that started me thinking about War, Wargaming Fest. And why I feel like I'm just uh, sat at home watching a parade, but but not at the parade. <laughs> I mean, that's what it feels like, right? I'm watching Macy's Day Parade. It's cool. It's a parade, but it's on TV, and I'm not really there. <laughs> that's what it feels like. I don't know why. It's bizarre. It's a party pack, man. Okay, it's got a lot of inscriptions and stuff, and then it's got the Wargaming Fest camo. I, I sort of like the Wargaming Fest camos. They always have fire and kind of crazy colors and things. I used to be fairly adamantly against that kind of stuff, but I don't know. I enjoy it now. I don't know why. Maybe it's just a mellowing in my old age or some such thing. Precious metals, uh, the steel hunter. I talked about this. I don't really like that camo. It's not very good. Uh, nothing else going on here. Okay. So over to gold. No, there's nothing really there. Premium account. I don't think we have anything special there. No, nope, just this TKE dude. Really guys type tier three premiums. They're kind of gee whiz things. It's not like you're going to run around making a lot of credits with your tier three premium. I suppose if you had to, you could, but goodness gracious, that would be uh, that that would feel more like self harming my self harming myself. <laughs> feel a lot more like self harm than anything. Here's the even ninety. Like I said, this is a pretty good deal, especially this one right here with the coupon used. Fun tank, man. The Even 90, a lot of fun. If you like if you like lights, Even 90 is a great one. 
plays a lot like the Brit Lights. It's tiny and can get into crazy little places and has fantastic camo. Probably some of the best camo actually in the game. I don't know if it's number one. Des Games did a video on it. Number one is some TD, some Swedish TD can get the most camo in the game. Just sitting there. 1357, talked about that. And then just some basic tanks. There are some, a lot of these, actually let's go over to the specials because I think they were talking about, maybe they haven't started. There were supposed to be some tier eights that were good for front lines. Uh, I mean, I guess that one is. The 5-1 is good. This is good for TDs. For, you know what's nice about the Canonen 105 for frontline as a TD, if you like casemate TDs, it's mobility. It can it can move around the map, unlike, say, a JT 8.8 .8 or something like that that's very slow. This dude can reposition and run away. So that's one of the best, probably, casemate TDs for frontlines. TDs-wise, obviously the one Su-130 and the Scorpion G are also good choices because of their mobility and the turret. This one's not bad either. It's not as mobile, I don't think, as the Canon, but it can get out of its own way. Excuse me. That's pretty good heavy for Frontline. Remember this week on front. we'll get to it, but this week on Frontline, I think people can finally, is this the first week, I believe? Yes, this should be the first week that they can get the Tier 9 prize tank, so... You're going to see that people are already, they, I think the max is two plus, so we've had seven weeks. This is the eighth week, so they'll be on nine. So there are people who will just need to do one more prestige level, and you're going to be seeing that tier nine prize tank or, or reward tank in game. And that's pretty much it for the specials, guys. There's just not a whole bunch going on other than the War, War Gaming Festival or the Tank Fest tanks, one each day, and today happens to be the ELC even 90. All right, let's see where we are. That's that. All right, let's move over to the missions. All right, not there's actually not there's a lot of missions going on, but not much to tell. Steel Hunter is still happening. That goes to September 16th, actually till Monday. So you need to knock out your Steel Hunter stuff if you're going to do that, and that is for today. Be gone on Monday apparently. I wonder if they'll extend that. It's so popular. Probably not. Will it come back? I don't know. Good question. Player tank class right. This is the one you have to put codes in. So pretty standard. Lots of good little things to get from there. Scavenger hunt is still going on. You'll see that I am actually at, I've collected 13 of 31. Uh, I think I got yesterday's code. Yeah, so I've only completed 12, which means I'll get one more for today. I'm a couple days behind. I missed a couple codes along the way. But I've got so many reserves. I'm not going to worry about it too much. And the problem for me is I'm not grinding any lines. So Trying to get to the 30,000 and 10,000 doesn't really entice me too much to worry about it that much. But remember to get your codes in if you want to get up to that 31. And speaking of 31, is that, did they think about that? <laughs> oh. Let me straighten my eyebrows out. Oh boy. You don't see this because it, it's showing my game client, but I just looked at the calendar. How many days are there in September? <sighs> All right, let's move on. <laughs> Ostensibly, let's see if I used it right, they are going to give you a couple extras which has been the standard, but those are extras. So are they really standard? In the past, it's been because there was a mistake made with the code, so, so Domo gave some out. And last month, I think he just gave them out anyway. Is that going to happen this month? I hope so, because otherwise we're a day short in a month, fellas. <laughs> I need that Kermit the Frog meme, with, but that's none of my business. <laughs> All right. Sorry, Domo, I had to take that shot at you. Here we go. Tank Festival. Did we talk about that? That's what we just did. Oh, no, that's the tickets for your... Maybe that's part of why I'm thinking that Tank Fest is going on and there's a lot going on, but there's nothing going on. These dog tags, what's, what's the point? Seriously, in the big picture, what's the point of these things? You'd probably say, Guido, it's... It's a video game. The point is to have fun, and you show your dog tags when you kill someone. Ah. <laughs> I don't get it, man. I do not understand the dog tags. 
I really don't. I, call me an old curmudgeon, out of touch, out of tune, whatever you want to do. I do not get the dog tags. I really don't. I don't. You know what would be really cool? If you collected the dog tags from the other guys. And then you had a, a big collection, you know, hanging from your ceiling like some creepy mass murder. <laughs> I wonder if you just saying that word puts me on, on a list somewhere because it's on the internet. Anyway, that that went off the that went off the rails really fast. Tank Festival, there you go. <laughs> the dog tags. I don't I don't get them. I don't get it. Back to school, a lot of goodies. What are these for? I could not figure this one out. I don't see an end result of X number. There must be a there must be a mission uh, description somewhere. How do I know how many of these things I have? I, I looked at it earlier and it just again I'm just like I don't understand what you're doing, man. What is this for? <laughs> I just spit while talking. I got all fired up my spit while talking. Maybe I need some more coffee. Hold on. Seriously, what do these do? I get 10, I get 10, okay. 24 hours, got it. I can do one of each of these every day. Oh, this is tank rewards. Why doesn't it say tank rewards? <laughs> That's tank rewards, fellas. I wonder where I am on tank rewards. We'll check that in a moment. Let's get back to that. We'll do tank I forgot about that. It's called back to school this week. How about tank rewards... Is it colon or semicolon? I don't I always forget. Anyway, whichever one it is. Tank rewards, that thing, back to school. I don't know. This seems easy to me. I got some goodies for streaming. How does that work? Do I have to stream or do you have to watch a stream? Again, I don't know. See, I'm supposed to be telling you guys these, but there's so many things going on. I did complete it. Frontline, this was cool. I was hoping they were going to give more of these out. I've collected them. I have my, what is it, 10 or 9, whatever it is. I have them, so I'm going to use them this week. We'll see how fast I can crank through. I'm, I'm only at like Prestige 4 or 5 or something like that, so we'll see how far I can get in one week with the boosters. Hotel's still going on. That is the Twitch Prime thing. Right. Man, that's a lot of play in the King Tiger Sea, isn't it? <laughs> Tier challenge. Those are just nice missions to have. Realize a lot of these you had to put codes in, so watch for that. Especially the, especially the well, scavenger hunts obviously all codes, but player tank class right. You've got to make sure you do your codes on that, guys. Do not forget if you want those. There's nothing else. Other missions are standard, and then premium missions. That's pretty much it. Hold on a minute. We're gonna go check where I am on tank rewards. Remember, it's called Back to School. Back to School? Yes, Back to School. Exclamation point. Oh, man, that's pretty funny. I play a lot. I play this game a lot. I only have 195 of these. <laughs> I haven't even reached Tier 1. <laughs> wow. How long does this go? Till October 1st. I'm halfway through the thing, and I've only got 195 tickets. <clears throat> Do you know why? Because those are very specific requirements. I didn't go through them, but there's very specific things you have to do. There might even be... Let's go back to it because maybe, maybe there are even t uh, class requirements or tier requirements. Let's go back and check this out. Where'd it go? Uh, oh yeah, back to school. Okay. Battle. Okay, you get 10. So that's fine. That's homework. Recess. Spot. Sp study hall is spot. Remain undetected. Isn't that the same thing? Their tier requirement? What is going on here? Now, this appears to be higher tier. Is that right? Higher tier than this one? Yes, there's a tier requirement. Okay. Does it say that there? Spot in it. Oh my god. <laughs> Why do you do this, Wargaming? Please, please, for the love of God, stop. I only know it's a tier because I've had to look. Is it there or am I missing it? Recess, undetected, no tier requirement, but you go here and then you notice there's very definitely a tier requirement. Oh my gosh, okay. And apparently a tank type requirement, right? Because those are all light tanks, am I correct? It looks like light tanks to me. Oh boy. What about detention? Damage caused, what can I do? Uh, 
that exceeds the hit points of your vehicle, okay? Apparently these are TDs. <laughs> okay, what about this? Survive. What do I have to survive in? I have to survive in TDs. <laughs> oh, man. And I'm after school, then I have to go after... S what? List? What is that? Select a vehicle. A new button I've not seen before. What does this button do? <laughs> I'm going to straighten my eyebrows again here. <clears throat> okay. Oh my gosh. That's actually good. But it's a list. Cause damage to enemy. List. List of vehicles, all nations. <laughs> and there's a list also. <laughs> How many of those have that little list? Did I miss them? See, we're tangentizing now. That's my word. That's a word I just made up. All right. So don't worry about it. This has a list also. So once you get to after school, how many of these have a list? This does not have a list. <laughs> There's no list. There's a <laughs> select the vehicle. This one appears to be mediums of lower tier types. Or is it all tiers? Looks like it goes to eight. Okay, so was that exams? And then junior theme is high tier mediums. So mediums, list. <laughs> These are heavy tanks. Oh, did heavy tanks? Heavy tanks got the business. Is that what happened? Heavy tanks got it figured out. Whoever, whoever mecked the heavy tanks section? Oh my, could you met? Did different people do each one of these? Oh, guys. I have tears. I have actually small tears coming out. I'm laughing so hard. This is incredible. Okay, so we figured out back to school is mm, tank rewards. And there are some requirements for the types of tanks that you use. Good luck. <laughs> I bet wherever, is it spelled out somewhere? What about here? Does this have the mission? Go to missions. All right, let's do this. Oh. <laughs> oh, here they are. So is it spelled out here? I bet it is. Uh, yes, there it is. Study hall. There you go. Okay, yep, yep, perfect. How come this verbiage can't be... Oh, shoot, sorry, guys. Hold on, hold on. It's always good when you're giving someone a hard time about the way they are showing things to not show while you're talking about it. You know what I mean? To, to do the exact same thing they're doing. <laughs> All right, here we go. So back to back to the beginning. Here are the, the missions. So play a battle. That one's straightforward. But recess, it shows it right here, right? Once per day, light tanks. Okay, that's fantastic. That's the info we need. Why can't this info be over Oh, go away, stupid monitor. Over here. Why can't that be here on back to school? Maybe on the... I don't get it. It is if you go to the heavy. Whoever did the heavy cards, good on you. You actually had a thing where you could find the thing. A thing where you can get the thing that you need. <laughs> good Lord. All right, I've had enough of this. Let's move on. We have beat that dead horse to death. We are on to subjects du jour. I'm starting to get hyped up on the coffee. I'm feeling it. How about you guys? Do I start talking faster the more caffeine I have? I think I do. All right, let's go. Okay, subjects du jour. We've got patch 1.6.1 coming out. A uh, small patch. It's in common test right now, so I'd expect it any day. Probably not tomorrow because they're doing frontline. I think the craft work map, the new frontline map, by the way, frontline's going to have two maps this time. I think it was already loaded in one of the micro patches already, so I. I I don't have this 100%, but I'm pretty sure we're not going to get a patch tomorrow morning. Maybe. if it And it doesn't mention craft work. I have to dig back if 
if a micro patch before this actually had crap work in it. It doesn't say it here. We'll find out in Monday. Maybe there's a small patch on Monday. I hope not, because I got a lot of y'all's a lot of y'all's videos or replays stacked up. I need to do some videos. Anyway, 1.6.1. What's it bringing? Multinational vehicles. Remember we talked about that last week. These kind of captured vehicles, say the Rudy, which is in the where Polish line, right? I think the Rudy is a Polish tank, and it will be able to train both Polish and Russian crews. Pretty cool. Uh, the King Tiger Captured, I assume, will be able to do the same thing. There's multiples of these. Quite a few in the Russian line, right? They got some kind of Matilda or Churchill or something on the Russian line. That should go over to Brits and Russians, all that kind of thing. They're starting with the 3045 Rudy. So hopefully those will get added in fairly quickly. That's going on. Some new styles. You got pictures of them right here. Different camo styles. One for each nation, which is pretty cool. The Jaeger style. Ranked Battles is coming back. I don't know... I haven't seen a date on this, and I don't think it's part of Tank Fest. But it should be soon. It should be soon. And they've they rewickered it a little bit so that now we're gonna get ranked battles. And whatever they've done, they seem to think the low samples of the low sample, the low server size on NA will be fine. Multinational vehicles, ranked battles, and exterior is kind of small really. Uh, patch so actually hopefully this one won't break replays maybe because of the of the camo styles possibly that might break usually if it's some a new tank or a big changes or models things like that that's what breaks replays otherwise it won't work but there you go maybe I'll try this time the trick I've been told to just save this client somewhere else and then I can use, but man, then I got to keep track of which replay goes to which client. And then I would have to be organized. <laughs> right now, I have a very specific organization. I grab all the replays and I throw them on my desktop. <laughs> it's very organized. Extremely organized. All right. Where are we? Patch 1.6. We talked about that. Front line's coming up tomorrow. Like I've said multiple times, we have tank races coming up. That'll be the last thing for Tank Fest. I would assume that's next week. EU actually has a cool little mission, getting ready for tank races, and the mission is drive as many miles as possible or kilometers on the map, and then you get... Come on, NA, that would have been cool. That would have been fun. All right. The original IS-3, that's the 244 that I talked about right there. Uh, hey, come on now, don't get all over the Churchill gun carrier. I three-marked that bad boy. I think that's pretty much it. The Lance and C was yesterday. And there's nothing else really. Not a whole bunch going on. Just a lot of little things, you know, 3D models and 2D paint jobs and all that good stuff. TwitchCon's 27 to 29 September. That's next weekend. So expect to see a bunch of streaming going on. Probably a lot of giveaways. That might be, that might actually be the time where we feel like we're sort of involved in Tank Fest because Twitch, TwitchCon happens to coincide with the end of Tank Fest or near the end of Tank Fest. So watch out for that. Hopefully there's a lot of codes and things given out. There is a list of streamers. Uh, I know Mountain Man's going. Sofa Line's going. Soapy Line. Uh, a couple others in there. True is going to be there. There's a list on the website. And Ominous Fixin's going. Not in, not connected with Wargaming, but she's been invited otherwise. So she'll be there as well at TwitchCon streaming. So quite a few of the Watt NA streamers are going to be there. Cabbage and Domo, I believe, are going out as well. And there'll be an M18 Hellcat to go goo goo and gaga over. I wonder if it's this. I don't think it was the same one. It might be the same one that I saw at D Day Conneat. Not sure, to be quite honest. But how many of those can there be? I don't know. Not too many, I would say. Okay, now we are going to get to. We're going to get to the ominous, um, very serious part here. This is a, well, first of all, this is titled Pushers, Bots, White Knights, and Rebels. <laughs> okay, so there has been a lot of chatter on the forum and a lot of action in the game. Uh, serious bots who have gone unpunished, or <clears throat> let's not say unpunished because we don't know that, un 
banned, let's call it that. Whatever their punishments have been or haven't been, as of now, a lot of these guys are not banned. How many of these serious bots have been banned in the past? I have no idea. But I bring it up, it's noteworthy because it's being noticed, and it's being noticed by a lot of players. And I, I think it's a bit of a consequence of a smaller in a server size that now, because the players who have been around a long time are starting to really track these guys and know about them. I know that Pig, the Pig She Flies, has brought it up multiple, multiple times. The other kind of connected thing to this is this Clan HC, which has run around using invite codes to, and I talked about it last week, to do the old physics abuse thing and trash games for another depending on if there's two platoons of them in a game, so, you know, six from 30, 24, math and public, you know, anywhere from 24 to 27 players, or 29 if there's only one of them pushing people around. They tend to do it in platoons because they can ruin more people's game experience all at once. That's where I get the whole White Knights and Rebels thing because this is also connected to, you know, threads of the week. This is Pig, and again, these are kind of, I'm, I'm going to, jumble them together, it's not the exactly the same thing, but this was Pig's thread talking about this guy here with, look at this, This I don't have the main page, but you're talking about a KV-5 at 34%, an IS-6 at 34 a Defender at 33%, with that many games, and an average damage of 114. So it was an interesting discussion in the thread because people brought up some valid points. Hey, look, it's, it's not against the game rules to suck. Right, but the counter argument is: All right, at, at what point does your sucking become against the game rules because you're hindering other people's gameplay? I.e., are you actively trying to destroy the gameplay? What's interesting about this particular thread, and one of the reasons I bring it up, and I'll do a video on it, because I was streaming. I don't know if you guys remember this. It was yesterday on the 14th. There was a game that was on what it's called Sweden in the it's Glacier, I believe. Uh, it's called Sweden in the Files with the aircraft carrier and the snow and all that stuff. And I was driving my T-43. And they had a KB-5 on the other side, which showed up up in the north at one point, got lit, and then was never seen again. And I commented at the time, I said, where is that KB-5? Because it became a really close game at the end. It was ended up being a draw, I believe. It became a really close game at the end. and I'm, But I mentioned, I said, if this KB-5 shows up, it's over. I mean, it's, it has to be near 100%. Last time it was seen, it was at 100%. Nobody hit it. If he comes rolling into the cap right now, it's me and a near-dead, I think, P.43 and an M44 or something. So two Tier 7 mediums, both near-dead. An M44 against, it was at the time, three, it was weird that there were three Santa Mills in one battle, but they had three Santa Mills an RD or two, and this KB-5 blew to left. So it was 3v5 to 8 or whatever. I mean, we were in bad shape. Had the KB-5 just simply driven across the map, it would have been all over. Well, that game got linked by somebody else that was on the enemy team with the KB-5. And I didn't know this. So I, I downloaded it because they said, hey, here's this guy. You can see the stats right there. This guy right here was driving this tank in this game I was in. So I downloaded it and wanted to check it out. And I went, holy crap, that's my game. That's the one I was in while streaming and noting at the time, like, what is this dude doing? Well, what he did is he went up there and sat. And then near the end of the game, he turned around and he drove all the way back to his own cap and started driving circles around his cap circle. And one of the arty on his team shot him, which now we don't have team damage, so of course he didn't do anything. So then he turns his turret and he shoots the arty. <laughs> so, the, you know, the question then becomes... Is he just, I don't want to use the word, not, I was going to, I'm not, trying to be kind here, right? I don't want to use derogatory terms. Is, is that just the way the person is? Do, it, that's how they enjoy playing the game. They drive out, maybe they walked away and pet the dog, and then they come back, hey, I'm going to go back to cap and protect it. They have absolutely zero idea how the game is played. They don't care necessarily, and there's no crime in that, right? Or, and really at this point with this many games, is it just a person actively trying to hurt gameplay. So I don't have an answer. I know that a lot of people in this thread came down on the one side of, yeah, he's an obvious bot, ban him. I lean heavily that way, but at the same time, I also can't say, wow, is he, is he just that way? He, she, them, whatever it is. 
Or are they actively trying to hurt? Well, you'd have to take more games and look at what else they were doing. But it feels like this is an obvious game destroyer. All right, which now segues, see I'm using lots of words today, into the next subject, which is these guys from this clan. From one of the Excelsiors and Clan HC. Renamed user because his name was some racist slash misogynist slash band name. They all had names like that. These are dudes who are going into games with invite codes. You'll see that he's got a whole 248 battles, all probably trashing people's games. Clan now CK, CKA as opposed to HC. I think HC has been disbanded or at least was sanctioned by Wargan. They'll go into a game in a platoon. They try to sink, excuse me, they try to sink in if they can, so they'll get a platoon on each side. And they start shoving people around. And I've seen those, I've seen the replays. It, it's obvious. Now, these guys are absolutely breaking the rules of the game and trashing people's games. So, on the one hand, you've got guys like the one right before that that are doing it solo. And then you've got these guys, the White Knights and Rebels, is which I'm, what I'm calling them Pushers, Bots, White Knights, and Rebels. Because this. Screed right here, which I won't download, and I've seen copies of it without downloading this guy's file because I wouldn't trust it further and I could throw it. Notice I can't throw a file because it's just electronic, so I have zero trust for it. <laughs> That's what it means. The Screed talks about how they are basically trying to show wargaming that this kind of thing can happen. Noted, you are freaking geniuses. Wow. Nobody knew that you could do this until you guys did it. What an exploit you have found. I mean, it was completely unknown to anybody that you could ruin people's games. What? Goodness gracious. What? Oh my gosh. What would we do without white knights and rebels like you? Uh, come on, man. Seriously? You're saving us all from the big, bad, mean wargaming because you can exploit the game? Wow. Wow, I... Gee. My whole world has changed. You know what I mean? I think all my listeners right now, their minds have been expanded and now they understand the evil wargaming and how things can be exploited to ruin people's games. Oh my gosh. Genius level. This is 200 IQ kind of stuff right here. Wow. Look, come on. It, it's a pixel tank game, dude. What, what exactly is going to change in the world? Or even your world, wherever the your world is, which appears to be in bizarro land, what on earth could you possibly help or change by acting the fool like that? There is something in their mind that makes them feel like this is very special. Uh, it's a very special kind of thing to do. You know, it's, it's, it's God's work. You know what I mean? We're, we're bringing the information to them. We're exposing the evil of wargaming and their terrible game that can be exploited. So we're going to run around and destroy the gameplay of thousands of players to prove our point that you can destroy the gameplay of thousands of players. <laughs> Holy cow. Oh, what do you, what do you, there's no answer to that. So this is the terrorists, um, oh, what do they call it? Not dichotomy. This is, this is the terrorists, um, fallacy, I guess I think it's called, you know, the whole, if you don't do X, then I'll do X and it's your fault. No, bruh, it's your fault. If you threaten somebody, to, if they don't comply and you're going to do X, and then you blame it on the victim, 
That's horseshit. It's actually your fault, you clown. <laughs> anyway, it was with some trepidation that I go off on that because the thing about vindictive little turds like this is they will then decide it's time to go after you. We'll see what happens. Uh, you know, I, but it has to be said, man. It, somebody has to tell the truth. Somebody has to call out stupidity when it is there. I try not to do the drama thing. I, I don't. But this isn't drama. You know, I'm not. It, it's just stupid. You're morons. <laughs> you really are, man. Uh, use your power for good, fellas. Use your power for good, not evil. All right? This isn't. You're not Batman. <laughs> you, you might be sitting there in Batman underwear, but you're not Batman. <laughs> oh, man. I love you know what you guys think down there. I, I don't know. Is it is it right to to do that just to show Wargaming that there is a exploit or a chink in the armor? Or is it the most obvious thing ever, in my opinion it is, that you could do this? I don't know, man. Let me know. Let me know what uh, what you think down there. Appreciate it. Uh, let's move on. You know, I'm not I'm not done with this. We're gonna I'm gonna try to I'm gonna try to explain this in a more reasonable fashion than than a bit than the tirade, I guess. I don't think that was a tirade necessarily, but let's let's break this thing down. Most users' experience in this game. Is not, is not defined by bots or physics abusers. They're out there, they happen. If you're like me, a power user, or pig for example, then, and probably a lot of people watch this channel, at least right now as you're really into the game, you notice the, the big ones, like the guy that pig pointed out. I actually don't too much, but other people do, and that's fine, so it happens. It's like being cut off in traffic it happens, but it doesn't define your drive to work, and you're not going downtown trying to get a law that says you can't change lanes. It's there, you note it, you move on. It doesn't define your drive to work. It doesn't define the game that there's some bots and physics abusers out there. It's a known vulnerability, it happens, but now you get people who come in and actively exploit it, more so than just the bot that just sits there as a 1v guy, kind of guy. You get multiples of these people who are going to come in and try to prove some point about something everyone knows happens. And for the user, me, you, casual players, serious players, etc., we're just sitting down trying to play a pixel tank game. It's a tank game and you drive around and you shoot each other and it's an interesting pastime. Some of us take it more seriously than others. That's all good. I really enjoy it. I turned it into a power hobby. I do the YouTube thing, make a couple dollars. I enjoy myself. I, I like doing it. So, you know, a couple bots doesn't really define my experience. But when you get people who actively start to organize and put together an entire clan, and their purpose is to somehow exploit or show an exploit that everyone already knows about, and somehow this is a grand crusade that's supposed to change the world, or at least the game, they don't think it's gonna change the world, at least I hope not. <laughs> but I'm, they seem to want to change something in Wargaming's actions, in the way that Wargaming maybe gives out codes or somehow close the loop on the exploit, which I don't know how you would do necessarily. And the end result is probably going to be the removal of these codes, which is bad for the game. It's bad for the player base. These were good deals. These were invites to get people in and start playing the game. So really, at the end of the day, all they really are doing is harming the game, even if they feel like they're trying to help. The fact is, the end result will be harm to the game because the code will go away. Wargaming will put sanctions on that kind of action. That will have secondary and tertiary effects on things. I have a code, an invite code, that has my name on it. It's part of my branding, part of them trying to to influence their game, trying to incre increase their player base. 
And I suspect that will probably go away because they're using these more or less endless codes and endless email addresses and continuing to sign up for the free game and screwing over everybody that shows up in their game in some kind of misguided idea that they're going to improve things. When in reality, what they're really doing is crapping all over everybody in sight. That's one of those things where one person you know, craps their pants and everybody's wearing diapers. But in this case, it's purposeful. So the bottom line here really, guys, is that what, what you're doing, if you're watching, or what they're doing, if, you, if you're not one of them, is you, you, are, you are having a negative, <clears throat> excuse me, you are having a negative impact on people's free time, on people's lives, the lives, at least the part of it that turns on World of Tanks and tries to play World of Tanks. Directly, negatively impacting people's free time. They work hard, they come home, they want to play a tank game, they don't want to be pushed around by a bunch of douchebags who are taking free tanks that are supposed to be a good deal and somehow trying to prove that there's an exploit that everybody in the world knows about. For some kind of change in the game that remains unknown. That's the bottom line of, of what's happening here. It has no purpose, it has no end, it's not useful for anything, and it doesn't help. That's, that's the honest truth. But you can try to spin it any other way you want, make yourself uh, look good, make yourself feel good, but at the end of the day, you're not doing anything except for being a jackass. And there you go, that's the bottom line, it really is. And what's actually more interesting to that and I've spent a lot of time talking about it. It's on the forums. The actual fact is that the vast majority of games you don't really interact with. Well, while you do bone over a lot of people, a lot more than you probably should be able to, obviously, uh, at the end of the day, you're not doing anything. Most people probably don't even notice it. I mean, it's, it's literally the pissing in the wind plan because nobody's going to care except for people like me who are power users and we're 0.01% of the game community anyway. <laughs> all right, that was enough of that. Let's move on. Let's all right, guys, that all got very serious there, didn't it? Let's, uh, let's wrap this thing up. We talked about uh, Guido's Flying Circus. We talked about the missions and specials that happened. Some of the things coming up, like the patch, Frontline tomorrow. I will be streaming tomorrow. TwitchCon's coming up. And then we had a long diatribe about whatever. Whatever it is they're trying to do. That is all I've got. Have a good Sunday. I hope you enjoy yourselves. Watch some American football. Watch some American football. Watch some uh, footy if you have to. Whatever. Is footy... I don't think it's even going on now. That's a spring thing, isn't it? I don't remember. I don't know if it's fall or not. But anyway, that's all I've got. I'm heading out. We'll get this thing edited. edited, edited. <laughs> we'll get it edited and sent out to you later.